Look at that. Definitely pee. It doesn't smell like anything. You just, you just smelled that pee. Uh, the snowy environment can be treacherous. And one of the most dangerous things about exploring in the cold. Can... Oh. Every year, the bitter cold of winter wraps its icy blanket across the northeastern United States. And with the arrival of snow, comes a stark visual change to the landscape that creates an eerie, yet beautiful world for adventure. Today we are trekking through the frozen wilderness of Prairie Oaks Metro Park. This diverse ecosystem stretches nearly 500 acres and its trail systems create a maze way for exploration in its forests, meadows, lakes, and rivers. Well, the wind is whipping and it is freezing cold, and this is about to be our very first Brave Wilderness wintertime adventure. Mario, are you ready? Well, I'm from Florida. This is actually the coldest temperatures I've ever experienced. It's like 10 degrees right now. And normally we would be out looking for reptiles, amphibians, insects, and arachnids, but not in the snow, and why is that? Well, they can't survive right now, so they're actually out hibernating and hungry down, as what I think I should be doing today. Yeah, but there are lots of other creatures that you can find in the snow, and specifically the signs of these creatures. Now, winter is a great time to go out and look for mammals, and I actually have one of my very first field guides. This is the Peterson First Guide to Mammals, and I love this because it also shows you the tracks, which is the primary thing that we're looking for. Right. What I'm really excited about, I think you're going to be excited for, is deer and antlers. Yes. So at this point, we might actually find some shed antlers. Right, because we mm -hmm. just got through rutting season and the bucks are beginning to drop those antlers. I would right. consider an antler the holy grail of artifacts out here in the wilderness. Right. Ready to head off into the cold? Let's do it. Here we go. Check this out. Our first tracks right here. Pretty sure that we are looking at red fox tracks. And the reason I'm pretty sure that they're fox tracks is in some of them, you can see the little pads and also the claws. So they're too small to be coyote. All right, Mario, actually here's a great one right yep. here. Okay, so I'm on carnivorous dogs. All right, yep. Red fox, absolutely without question, that yeah. is a fox. So you can see kind of the fur around the pad, so it kind of gives it that shape. Mm -hmm. Now we could follow these fox tracks, try to find the fox, but they look as if they were probably from this morning or maybe even yesterday. But I am going to mark this down in the adventure guide. All right. Under species identification, our first animal of the day, red fox. Moving on. Those are rabbit tracks for sure. You can definitely see the hind feet and the bigger front feet plopping down and see the motion. One hop to the next hop to the next hop. Hop its way down and towards the river there. Uh, the river is actually a perfect place to look for animal tracks because the water is still flowing, which means that there is fresh hydration there for those animals to consume. So I say we kind of head this direction and wrap our way down to the edge of the river. All right, following suit. Wow, bird tracks in the snow. Not something you usually think you're gonna find. And you can see, it looks like right here, it lost its footing and slipped a little bit, likely stepped on the thinner ice and broke through. Wow, bird tracks, cool. Definitely a heron hunting down here by the river's edge. Well, add the great blue heron to the list of creatures that are out hunting today. I think we're gonna have to go down river a little bit further. Have 
the entire And that's how you slip and go right into the water. As soon as I was about to say, the entire environment is like glass. That's what happens. And look at this. Whew, good thing I got out of that before I got soaked, even at nearly two inches in thickness. I went right through that, just the weight of my body Whew, took me through. one but I'm still dry and we're still moving watch your footing all right Mario what are we looking at here it looks like a snake in the snow yes there's these little like serpentine tunnels or at least what I think is a tunnel in the snow yep oh look yeah wow look at that 100% oh wow that is definitely a little mouse tunnel isn't it nice so basically the rodents or underneath the snow, they got these little highways that they create to stay warm and stay hidden from predators. Pretty cool. Ah. You know what kind of tracks these are? Coyote, 100% based on the size and the area that they are in. Let me get out the field guide here so I can show you guys. There's Coyote, one of my cousins. And of course, then that print, which is about the size of a dog. Uh, these tracks are older. I can tell that because there's already snow in them and I cannot see any distinct paw prints, but without question, too big to be a fox. So my guess would be those are coyote tracks. Very cool. All right, we're gonna add that to the list of animal signs we have come across today. In addition to the red fox, the Eastern cottontail and the gray squirrel. It just looks like we are on another planet right now. It's so cool being out in the snow. Wow, look at this. Oh, you guys know what that is? That is some busy work from a beaver. I don't know what that beaver was thinking, gnawing down this tree. There's no way it was gonna drag it out into the lake, but look at that. The tree has been completely stripped of its bark and you can see all of the tooth marks. Now it looks like they just scissored right through the bark and we're gnawing off parts of this, but this is where you can see it took down that tree. Look at how big that part of the tree is. For a beaver, that's pretty impressive. Check this out. Look at all those bite marks. Cool find, good spot, Mario. All right, let's keep moving. That's some cold wind. Let's check out this tree over here. Trees are always a good spot to look for things because deer will rub their antlers up against there. We got birds that will perch. All right, spread out. You go over that way, Mario. There's a feather, 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 feather. Look at this. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Look at that. Wow, perfectly camouflaged in. Let me set the GoPro up here. Hold that, hold that. Oh man. Set the GoPro up like this to get a, a secondary shot. That's a nice find. You know what kind of feather that is? Some type of bird of prey. Yep, that's right. That is the primary wing feather of a great horned owl. Nice. A great horned owl are actually pretty tough to tell from red tail hawks. Um, it's really this distinct banding that does not cap off at the top as totally black that gives it away as being gotcha. a great horned owl. Now, great horned owls are really unique because they are silent predators. Right. Why is that, Mario? Well, actually, if you were to look in a microscope at the end of these filaments, you're gonna see these little barbs that channel the wind through and prevent any sound from being created as they flap. Sure, so as a nocturnal predator, a great horned owl would be out in this meadow likely hunting for something like mice or even rabbits moving around at night and then being able to be silent, they can swoop in and get their meal. Now you look at a tree like this that's kind of isolated amongst the rest of the forest and it's the perfect spot for a predator like that to stake out right. and eventually catch something. So pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Now in most instances, I do collect and keep some of these things, but considering we are in one of our local Metro parks today, we are going to place the feather 
right back where we found it and continue on toward the tree line and see what else we can find. Nice, great find. Yeah. So just on the other side of these trees here is the river. Now, this is a perfect place to look for mink. I have actually seen mink here in this park before along this section of the river. Have you ever even seen a wild mink before? I have, but in much different conditions. Warmer conditions, that's okay. for sure. Yeah. yeah, they're a pretty widespread mustelid. And if you guys didn't know, they are related to badgers and wolverines, of course, weasels and skunks. Um, we got to work with a mink in captivity once, right. uh, Steve Kroeschel's Wildlife Sanctuary. They're very bitey. So if yes. you guys are wondering, Coyote, if you see a mink, are you gonna catch it? Not a chance. Why would we not try to catch a mink? Well, they're probably gonna bite you. Yeah, and very aggressive. And what's interesting about mustelids is they can actually move their bodies around within their skin. Right. And that means you grab it, it's just gonna spin and bite you. But as we get up here, let's walk quietly. Hopefully we'll find some tracks. If we're lucky, we might even spot one. Perfect time of day to see mink. Nice. All right, let's go. Definitely wanna always look for mink on fallen tree branches. Mink will always take the path of least resistance. And that's where I always find mink tracks is usually as they would just be scurrying along the top of a fallen tree. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that, Mario. Let me know if you see any disturbances in the snow on top of logs and we'll be getting close. What? What's that? There's tracks out of the water. Out of the water? Yeah. That could be a mink. Would they create kind of like a little serpentine motion? Yes, 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 yes. This could be a mink right here. Yeah. This could 100% be a mink. You see this very distinct drag right here? Yeah. That's a tail, right? So you can see the body impression where it came down just like this. Dude, good spotting. 100%. Nice. It is likely that that is a mink. You see this? Yep. Down, down, down. I think this is, I think this is our mink. Okay, let's keep going this way. We're on a trail. Let's go, guys. All right. Doesn't smell like it, though. Doesn't smell like a mink. It would stink like a skunk. Definitely a mink. Goes, oh, look, look on the other side. That's more distinct. Look at that. Definitely pee. Doesn't smell like anything. You just, you just smelled that pee. Well, yeah, I wanted to see if it had any sort of musk smell to it. If it did, you could say, well, it's fair to say that would be a mink. What do you see over there? More ice. No tracks? More ice, no tracks. Ah. Not looking good. That was a good effort, though. Yeah. I think we could definitely say they were mink tracks, right? Yeah, without question. Okay. And the thing about members of the weasel family is they're extremely clever. I'm guessing it came down the ice and either went into the water or continued on the ice. Right. We just lost tracks. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. At least we got a uh, glimpse. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, the sun is starting to get low in the sky. Temperature is dropping. So I think it is time to head back to vehicle and call it a day. Yeah. I'm getting a little too cold. Okay. Well, keep your eyes peeled. Still good stuff to find. Woo. Look at that. Those are deer tracks right there, for sure. Lots of deer tracks. Yeah, I'm following some tracks right now. Oh, an antler, antler! Dude, Mario! Yeah. Yes, yes! I got an antler, shed. Not a big one, but that is an antler. Look at this. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, good spot, man. I may not have even uh, noticed that. That is exactly what we were hoping to come across. White-tailed deer shed. Check it out. A little covered in snow. Yeah. Um, not a big one. Probably a second or third year buck, I would guess. Here, hold that for a second. Nice. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I have Look some warm that. tea in my bag. Let's get all the ice and snow off it. Ooh, the side. That's steaming. Yes, yes. This is cool. Hold on. There we go. Ooh. Get all that ice off. Wow. Okay, there we go. Wow. Gnawed on by something. Some sort of rodent. Maybe a squirrel. 
this is a great example of the fact that animals out here in the winter, you know, they have to fend for survival. They have to find whatever they can to eat. And believe it or not, an antler, a shed antler, does still provide maybe some nutrients. You see where something was kind of gnawing at it, and it's kind of porous there. So it is vascular. Right. Um, and you could potentially get some nutrients from this if you were uh, kind of chewing on it. Now, deer shed their antlers after the rut. Usually between December and March, you're more likely to find them this time of year, February into March. Mm. And you don't find them all the time because animals just mow through them right. when it comes to gnawing. And look at this. Look at yeah. how much of the antlers already gone. Wow, this is so cool. Now, again, guys, because we are in the metro parks, we're not gonna take this. Normally, I, you should probably take an antler home with me, but obviously some animal has been enjoying this. Yeah. There's animal tracks all over the place, so. Everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if some little rodent comes in and out from these logs and enjoys this as a snack. But certainly, I would say the coolest find of the day. Nice, it was definitely worth uh, being a little cold and uncomfortable, but we did see some cool stuff and this was uh, the top. Absolutely, well, we came across fox tracks, coyote tracks, obviously deer tracks, some rabbit tracks, tracked a mink but didn't see it, and then finally came across the holy grail of artifacts here in central Ohio, a white-tailed deer shed. Nice. So cool. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mario Dakoa. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next location. Well, I'm gonna just plop it right back there into the snow. I think it's time right. to call it a day. Tea break? Yes, yeah, tea break. Man, that was awesome. One of my favorite places to explore are the Columbus Metro Parks. And if you're looking for a great place to go out and see animals, or signs of them in a natural environment, the parks in your area are a sure bet. And while the sharp chill of winter and its desolate landscapes may appear dormant, there's still a considerable amount of animal activity you can witness. It's just a matter of knowing where to look and what to look for. If you enjoyed this frozen adventure into the winter wilderness and wanted to see a mink as badly as we did, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I got nose to nose with one of these elusive predators. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure. Thank <laughs> you.